SMP Live, if I were to try and explain why it went on for such a long time, it would probably be because they were all characters of vastly different personalities and story arcs when they weren't even trying to have a storyline in the first place. And due to this, we inevitably get to spend a wider amount of time getting to know each and every one of these Minecraft YouTubers in their journey throughout the Minecraft series. Over the course of the time that we spend with each and every character, the opinion and relation we created with them changes. Rather than being an opinion we take in and move on from, this series brings in nostalgia and memories from long ago. SMP Live is definitely one of the reasons it would survive Minecraft's popularity. It is actually kind of sad when you think about the nostalgia of spending the summer binging videos or a live stream on any platform you could, any way you could. What everyone thought was the end of an era of Minecraft content, it showed how it was revived, and that type of content would never be forgotten. The amazing memories the viewers and fans as well as the creators have had, just watching the server unfold created a whole new start. And following them on this journey they created for the series is definitely one of the true reasons Minecraft became popular again. Something that allowed me to see that it's not so much the games you play that are fun, but the people you play those games with that really changes the game. And in a Minecraft server with varying different personalities, we really get to see how it all plays out in a creative format leading up to the end of the series. But for me to show you how well it played out, we had to get through the main factors of why it did so well, and how it all ended. On March 1st, 2019, the YouTuber by the name of Call Me Carson created a new Minecraft server called SMP Live. With multiple Twitch streamers and YouTubers to back him up, the only rules were that if you play on the server, you must be streaming. The only people safe from their role were Carson and SV Yoshi. The second rule was that all streamers in the server would have a hit price, and if they were donated the amount of money required in game, they must prank or kill the player the donator wanted them to. The hit system would become an extremely huge factor for why SMP Live was getting so much traction and popularity over time, despite its massive creator player base. Speaking of massive creator player base, on the very first livestream of the SMP Live server, the popular Minecraft YouTuber Ant Venom joined in Comic Carson's Twitch stream, demanding to get to play. After some time of Ant Venom and Carson talking, he was eventually given permission to join the server as long as he followed the rules. As soon as he joined, he was given a new name by everyone. And ever since that day he joined, it led to one of the biggest rivalries on the SMP server, the Ant Venom and Jay Schlatt rivalry. It all began because of Ant Venom saying the music this stall is the best record over the others when Jay Schlatt strongly disagrees. Stall from this day on will later go on to become one of the biggest memes in the SMP Live server community, leading it to slowly torture Jay Schlatt till the oncoming days. March 23rd, 2019. The construction of Spawn City was the very first event for SMP Live, which created multiple businesses along with transportation due to the creation of the spawn tree, which becomes really the main hub of the server, connecting the spawns to the nether. During the time the server went on, there were several events such as the assassination event and the build event, but even though they happened, they weren't really completed, or the winner just wasn't decided. Even though they were decent events, they still didn't compare to what was about to happen in the next few days. After the build event, they had zero idea of what history was about to be made, and Ant Venom and Jay Schlatt were going to end their ongoing feud to kill the Inner Dragon. After they killed the Inner Dragon, fans presumed the server was dying out all over the subreddit. However, when you flip the coin, life of the server didn't really end here. They all just didn't know they were making memories and having fun. I truly believe that is what made it last for so long, for it being a Minecraft server where creators streamed on it lasted longer than most people really expected it to, leading to many more memorable moments, and that's what makes it unique. It's a strange feeling how in the present it feels like nothing changes, but when you look back on something in the past, everything grows vastly different. Or how a simple title and song track can unite thousands of people over old memories and forgotten worlds. We never thought those nights back then playing Minecraft in 2012 as a kid were just going to be so nostalgic now. But here I am making a video on a Minecraft server talking about how it made Minecraft memories fade back, and that's what made this game so good in the first place. Seeing the old Minecraft YouTubers meet up with the new ones, and it really revived Minecraft, for me at least. April 11, 2019, Jay Schlatt introduces the Schlatt coin, which to the rest of the server is a new unique form of currency, which is originally thought of as a legitimate currency, but was actually a crypto exit scam that Jay Schlatt continued selling. But it didn't do anything, it was all just a part of, you know, the thought of owning one and being a part of something. However, this is just one of the examples of how each and every player interacted with each other on the server, creating their own businesses and creations. July 17, 2019. On this day, Carson invented the idea of a roulette wheel, and it was later implemented by SV Yoshi. The whole idea of the wheel was that if you reach a donation goal in a certain stream, you could spin the wheel for random effect. However, many viewers and fans speculate that this is one of the varying reasons that the server faded away. Right after the Inner Dragon, there wasn't really much to do on the server to begin with, and other YouTubers and streamers left as a result of that. November 5th, 2019, SMP Live had a new event where everyone would have to create a new invention to convince the judges that it was worth buying. However, the event was chaotic and loud, meanwhile everyone was shouting over each other to get their part in, leading to it go on for hours. Eventually, until Carson had to mute his in-game mic and said, This is absolute chaos and it's just not working out. Yeah, it's not going as planned. Uh, because no one is, uh, 
no one's actually doing what we wanted to do. So it sucked. Eventually SV Yoshi blew up the feeder and the ending minutes were full of damage left over and players looking for their stuff after they rolled back spawn. The live chats were declaring that it was over and people weren't very happy. And yes, it's just one of the reasons SMP Live ended, but I'm not here to explain all of the events and why it ended. If you would like that, there's a video I'll leave in the description by somebody else. The reason I'm here is to tell you all the reasons that people could always think a monumental event of the server would be the end. But just like in every story with different chapters, it isn't always about the story, it's about the characters who made the story for us to connect to. And every single one of these creators were the reason it was so entertaining with the different creations and conversations they brought each stream or video. It could have ended for multiple reasons, like the start of SMP Earth, or multiple other Minecraft servers that started due to the creators leaving to form a new horizon. However, I'm not really sure what it could be, and even though it's over with, I'm just glad that we get to look back at it on a good way. And while I was new to all these YouTubers who created it, I was really amazed by how well it brought me back. I've long ago fallen off of watching anything on YouTube that was centered around Minecraft and haven't really watched any of it in years. But seeing as the series came to an end this year and Minecraft was getting popularity again when the SMP Live videos came out, I became curious to what my personal encounter with a Minecraft series would look like in today's form. I really wasn't sure what to expect, but what I saw really surprised me. Mainly because it was so genuine that it made me reminiscent of long ago, back when we were all just kids sitting back relaxing and watching Minecraft videos when nothing mattered. It was when we all grew up wanting to be a part of something. I remember when I was younger, looking up to YouTubers wanting to join in on the video, and that's what makes watching others on YouTube pretty entertaining. You get this nostalgic feeling as you grow older, looking back to something you always wanted to be a part of. It's a bittersweet goodbye. As you grow older, that feeling becomes increasingly harder to find, and even though it's rare, you can still rest at ease knowing you got to enjoy it in the beginning. And if you didn't, you wouldn't really be able to look back at it in a way that it impacted you as a whole, and it embedded itself deep into your psyche long before it started. Mainly because the older we get, the more we all learn about ourselves and the world around us. That the more we stretch our arms out in order to reach for all of our goals and dreams, instead we found something that really made us reflect on an aspect of ourselves and made us realize how sad and detached from reality we must be. But that's just it. Some of us wanted that break from harsh reality through a YouTube video, and there's nothing wrong with that. We build these walls to protect ourselves from getting hurt, close the door and swallow the key because it's safer to keep locked and stay sheltered from something that could potentially ruin our everyday lives. But what if that life was something we should have gone after and strived to live for? What if looking up to these people and wanting to be a part of something so well put together was all just a part of growing up in general? Like loads of people, I would dedicate a ton of time to my phone and video games. And I think that's why growing up I was so drawn to escapism and virtual reality in video games. And probably why I was immediately drawn to SMP Live, to be put in a world outside of our harsh reality. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a good day. Elucid's the name, and destroying the disc stall is the game.